In our previous video, we studied the set of the integral numbers. So let's now learn two basic definitions. The first one is the prime numbers. We say that an integral a is a prime number if a is not zero or plus or minus one and it has only four divisors. So a few examples. plus and minus 2. It has four divisors, which are plus and minus 2, and plus and minus 1. Another example is 3. It has four divisors, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 1. 11 has also four divisors, plus or minus 11, plus or minus 1. So these four divisors we will always have two positives and two negatives. And these numbers will be, so the prime p will have the divisors plus and minus p and plus and minus 1, and this is another way we can define prime numbers, those that have only these divisors. And then we define the composite numbers as those which aren't primes. So an integer a is composite if it's not 0 or plus minus 1, and it has more than 4 divisors. For example, Four. Four has the divisors plus minus four, plus minus one, but it also has plus minus two. Minus six has plus minus six, plus minus one. This could be common for every number, every n we we'll always have plus minus n, plus minus 1, and we have some more. So 6, you have 6, 1, you ha also have 3, and 2. So we have 1, uh, one 2, 3, 4, times 2, because the plus, plus minus, we have 8, which is more than 4 divisors. Here we have 1, 2, 3 times 2, 4 has 6 divisors, which is greater than 4, and so it's a composite number. We also saw the definition of divisibility, and we made a few proofs for some of some properties, but now it's time for us to learn some other ones. The first property says that if I have d divides a and d divides v, then d divides the sum of a plus b. And why is this? Well, we have these two hypotheses. So, d divides a tells us that there exists an integral k, k1, such that a can be written as k1 times d. We also know that d divides b. So there exists another integral k2 such that v is equal to k2 times d. So with these two things we can write a plus b and a plus b 
would be this times this equals the sum of these two things so it's k1 d plus k2 d now if we take common factor z we can have k1 plus k2 d sum times d well if i call if i say that k1 plus k2 this is another integer and so i'm gonna just call it k and then i can write this as k times d and this tells us that d divides a plus b because i was able to write a plus d as one integer times d the second property is very similar and so i'm gonna leave it as, as an exercise it's pretty much the same technique if you know that d divides a and d divides b and then d divides a minus b it's very similar so i'm gonna leave it as an exercise now another property is the opposite of this is it's not really a property it's a rule that does not apply to the visibility so it says that if d divides a plus b then it is not true that d divides a and d divides b this is something that doesn't happen and an example can be 6 divides 4 plus 8 but 6 does not divide 4 and 6 does not divide 8 this means that there is not any k such that 6 times k equals 4 and the same here there is no k2 such that 6 can be written as k2 times 8 the third one it is true that if if d divides a plus b and d divides a so we know both these things and then d divides b and well d divides a plus b so if i can call a plus b i'm gonna call it c so we know that d divides c because c is a plus b and d divides a plus b and we know that d divides a and this property this 1.2 because it was sort of the same as property one says that if i have that d divides a and the divides b then i can subtract a to be a b to a and d will divide it so i can this is property 1.2 tells me that d will divide c minus a but c minus a is a plus b because this is c minus a which equals b so d divides b another property uh, what was the number three now property four says that if d divides a 
then v will divide c times a, where c is just an integer. And this is also very easy because we know that d we know that d divides a. And so there exists a k1, an integer, such that we can write a as this integer k1 times d. And if I multiply times c, c times a will equal c times k1 times d. I can first write this together and I know that if c is an integer and k1 is an integer, then I know that c1, c times k1 will be an integer. So I'm gonna call it k. Then c times a equals k times t. And this is the definition, so d divides c times a. Also another very easy property is that if d divides a and we take n any natural number, then what we have is that d with the power to the power n will divide a to the power n. And again, the proof for this is very simple because d divides a, so a equals some number k1 times d, and a to the power n will be k1 times d to the power n, and this is a product, so if k1 to the power n times t to the n, and this is just another number k integer times d to the n, and this is what we have here.